Good morning, honey bun. Good morning, honey bun. Oh, look at him. He wants to come in. Oh. Oh, honey We're going to miss you, Bowie. Come here. Oh, come here, Bowie. Come on, careful. Come here. Come here. Hey guys, it's Simo. So a few months ago, Kaylee and I went on a trip to the South Dakota Badlands as a celebration of our one year anniversary. I hadn't been out of state since 2015 when I took a trip to Los Angeles. I barely made it out of the city then, so I was determined to be ready for this trip. We saved up, plotted our drive, and Kaylee arranged a special trip as well as our campground at the Badlands National Park. Everything was going perfect until I forgot my card in the lonely little town of Mitchell, South Dakota. At the time I realized it, we were 300 miles past it and just miles from our campground. We drove the rest of the way and determined to figure it out. So, as soon as we arrived at the campsite, we set up and got on figuring out our situation. We'd forgotten a million things and we couldn't even blow up a mattress to lie down because we'd forgotten the hose to the air compressor. There was this nearby couple, and they noticed, having some, noticed us having some trouble, and offered to help us out. We got to talking, and they had also recently just lost their card earlier in their trip, and they gave us some advice. And long story short, we were able to get some money moved around so we could pay for the trip, and I was able to pick up my card at the gas station I had left it. This was only the first day of our trip, and... We still have two more days to go. You got it, Kaylee. Oof. Are you okay? Yeah. I'm the tester. <laughs> See? Say for us. This is going to be real hard unless you can like, walk sideways. <laughs> <laughs> We might have a better chance of hopping back the way I came. Or if you can pop up on your here. Beautiful, smart, and an athlete. like moss suits you know and just like laying these grass and you know <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> just put on a ghillie suit yeah and then i might get to see a rescue dog you know so guys we got really lucky as it rained just last night so there is fresh runoff all over the place exposing new rock for us to try to uh, maybe find a fossil or two wow i found one <laughs> it's in its mouth <laughs> <laughs> it's a bronto i can see it yep trip's over guys going home found one found we found one. our treasure yeah. So this is my first time ever actually looking for fossils. I wonder how long it takes until you actually find something. 
cannot remove fossils or materials from the national park. So, we used the video on my phone to confirm that those are in fact bones. Likely mammal bones, but fossils all the same. There is of little way to tell what they would be, because they're very fragmented. Yet, not a bad way to start the trip. Got me hyped for the fossil dig the next day. <laughs> you gotta watch your step around here. I know, I'm, I'm glad that these shoes are like flexible, you know? Now what's this? Oh hey, I think we found something here, guys. Let it focus. I think this might actually be some more petrified wood. That is super, super old wood right there. Wish I could take it and show somebody and get somebody to confirm it for me, but I'll just have to show them this video. I'll see what our paleontologist tomorrow thinks. Yeah, guys, this is like literally the first spot we started looking, and I'm pretty sure we've already found some fossils. Certainly not any dinosaurs, but I'm happy to find anything. All right, guys, I think we're going to be heading back to camp. We got to get to bed early because tomorrow we are going out with some bona fide paleontologists and we're going to be doing a fossil dig so it's gonna be a lot of fun so I'll see you guys back at camp So guys, the next morning, we woke up super early and drove halfway across the state again to get to the town of Belfouche, South Dakota. This is the headquarters of Paleo Adventures, our hosts of the Fossil Day. We would be meeting up at their building and we would ride out together to the dig site. It's 7 in the morning here in South Dakota. We just passed through Rapid City and we are closing in on the biggest adventure of our trip. We are going to Paleo Adventures where we're going to be going out to the famous Hell Creek Formation to do some fossil hunting. So we're outside here at Paleo Adventures. So we're going to be heading inside pretty quick, get all signed up for the dig and well, we're about to have a blast. Once we were inside, we were treated to a short orientation, an informational talk on how we'd be conducting our dig once on site. We were given some time to look around the building where they were showcasing all of the fossils that they had taken out of the dig site that we would be going to, including things like Triceratops, Edmontosaurus, Tyrannosaurus, Archaeoraptor, Dakota Raptor, tons of famous dinosaurs that we would get the chance to potentially find. Now once we were all ready to go, we piled into the dig team's vehicles and headed out in a convoy to the dig site. Just one more drive and we would be digging in the famous Hell Creek Formation. Last stop. <sighs> then we're digging. Okay, so I go. I don't know how many days you guys are going to be out here, but if you get one of these Prairie City cookies and you throw that bad boy up on your dashboard and you leave it up there for I don't know, a couple hours. 
course. When you come back to the car and eat that thing, it's like the freshly baked cookie. <laughs> Am I? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I gotta God. get this recorded. I need to know the secret to the good yeah. cookie. Okay, there's the idiot <laughs> video for the day. Out of this radio. Yeah, this is a Swedish meatball. they do, maybe we can dig there. You know, I just don't want to follow Tyler anymore. <laughs> there was a prehistoric pterosaur called Clipsoplatlus, and it was as long as a bus. Yep. Our guide, David, was a lot of fun. The driver on the left. He was telling lots of funny jokes and answering all of our questions. He was such a nice guy and made the adventure so much fun. It made the drive seem a lot less arduous. I was sitting here watching the other day when he got stuck and I was watching his back wheels go about two and a half feet off the ground. I'm like, this is not bad. <laughs> dollars off of my bill for repairing my car if I give him Tracy or Tops <laughs> I'm like, nice, this is fantastic. The unofficial currency is South Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've heard great t-shirt slogans on occasion. That sounds like a great t-shirt slogan. <laughs> on the front, the unofficial currency of South Dakota, and on the back, a big picture of a Triceratops or a T Rex too. There's such a thing as strawberry milk? It's flavored milk. It's. I'm, I'm relatively sure it's not very good for you at all. It comes from pink such cows. A thing as flavored milk? <laughs> Those are my favorite cows, by the way. The pink ones. And unfortunately, there's a rut on this side that if you go left, you probably flip your car. <laughs> oh boy. A little street that just drops down into the ground. <laughs> oh, look, check out the deer. Over there by that ledge. See it, Zoe? And it looks like we're here. Uh, it's been a bit of a bumpy ride, but we finally made it. As the story goes, Dr. Phil collected two T-Rex teeth and a leg bone and then left the rest of the rot and said, ah, it's just a river channel deposit, nobody cares about that sort of thing, and then proceeded to hike up and down the mountains and map and did some other things. Eventually, however, he was so rude and condescending to the rancher. All right, we're heading down into the site. Finally made it, Katie. by the buckets into this wall here so we do not want to walk on this wall here we get into and out of the quarry on that little ramp there so it just kind of goes around hooks around and deposits you over there and then we will set up to dig in this area here um, the surface collecting really you will find all kinds of little bits of fragments of stuff all through all those pebbles um, the actual excavation piece will be through this wall and then the sifting buckets are there, their position. If you're actually screening, make sure you're using the screen, the, the larger screen, 
There's a one eighth inch screen there. It will take you forever to screen a bucket of stuff with that one eighth screen. So use the bigger quarter inch screen. Um, while you guys are doing your surface collecting, I'm gonna put canopy tops up so we get a little bit of shade and try to keep ourselves a little bit cool. We got a little breeze, but we have no cloud cover at all. So it's gonna get hot down here in a very short period of time. Once the digging started, we split into groups. My group was including myself, Kaylee, this little girl named Zoe, and her dad, as well as our guide, David. And we sat there for hours digging, and it wasn't too long until I started to find fragments, and then I thought I struck gold. like nano tyrannus sorry I might have ruining your found... <laughs> the videos all of a sudden going like this. <laughs> i'm kind of a touchy feely guy in case you didn't notice i love it i'm Which excited it's crazy because he, he's forced <laughs> to give me a hug i'm like give me a hug he's like no i don't want to hug you all right so yeah it's right there that just might be a t-rex tooth So I've always been of the mind that Nano Tyrannus was really just a juvenile Tyrannosaurus. Okay. What are the counter arguments to that it'd be a different species? That's what Zoe thinks too. Um, I've seen enough diversity between Nano Tyrannus teeth and T-Rex teeth where I fall on the side that it is a completely different animal, different species. Um, I think the key argument is in the number of denticles per centimeter on the different teeth and even a juvenile T-Rex tooth has between 13 and 15 serrations or denticles per centimeter where the same size nano tyrannus tooth has 40 um, but there's also the baby teeth are smaller though yeah but the the number of denticles stays the same it's pretty consistent throughout every growth stage of the tooth um, in both animals um, also, the shape of the tooth, Nano Tyrannus teeth are much flatter, almost like a D-shaped base, where a T-Rex tooth is very much an oval or a round-shaped base. Those are really good. The, the things that I would focus on is the key arguments as, for the diversity of the animal, the key for the animal. I have a... And uh, as part of our um, company, we have a an infant T-Rex tooth. And even at that stage, the tooth is, is almost perfectly round at the base. Um, and I have a number of Nano Tyrannus teeth that are almost identical to size. And all of the teeth are flattened or D-shaped at the base. They're just very, very different looking teeth with very, very different characteristics. Did it come out? Yeah. Accidentally, the whole thing just came down at once. There it is. Did you find it? Oh, no. It's crocodile? It's, it's crocodile. Yeah. Alright. Well, the nice thing is you get to keep it. Oh, I was so hoping it was Nano Tyrannus or oh, T-Rex. me too. Well, I will bag that one for you. You can keep that one. Just keep looking for another one. Heck yeah. No, I'm sad for you, but I'm happy for you at the same time. Hey, it's early. Yes. 
And this is a big tooth, too, by the way. Oh, well, guys, it's past noon now. And we found a good amount of stuff. So far, I've found crocodile teeth. Kaylee's found some stingray teeth. Several bone fragments. And here in just a moment, I'm going to be excavating this little beauty. Check this out. Can you guys see that right there? This is a bone sticking out of the wall. You can actually tell it's a bone, it's not just a fragment. And the paleontologist with us is going to allow me to try to dig this out. If it's something scientifically significant, I won't get to keep it, but just the honor of getting to dig it out is going to be fantastic. I'm really excited. Everyone's out at lunch right now, so we're all just taking a little break from the heat. Because, man, it is so hot out here. But let me tell you, I've had so much fun. Do I look sunburnt? I'm probably sunburnt. It's like 92 degrees out here. Nothing but clear skies. Whew. It's been a lot of fun. And, hey, bonus, I might have some fragments of a Tyrannosaurus tooth. Which I'm really excited about. I think I found my new job. All right, guys, you looking for any new position? Mm. <coughs> now let's talk to Walter. All right. He's the he's the leader of the club. Yeah. So that was a question I had. Like, how how did you guys get started in doing this kind of stuff? Lindsay was curating museums for years. You know, yeah. And decided that he was kind of tired of that because it seemed like he would curate the museums and no one would listen. Yeah. Well, and other people would take credit for his work, which irritated him. And uh, he decided to start his own business. I've been digging at this bone for hours. How long does it go? Okay, guys, we've got about one more hour. Really? Come on, five more minutes. It broke just like a tooth, though, didn't it? <laughs> um, the teeth, when they break, uh, it's almost like layers of enamel. I caught myself so they there. shatter, they're almost like a tooth. <laughs> oh, I caught like myself there. Ring, I broke ring, the ring, 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 and each almost layer on the other side <laughs> is enamel. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have like that. Uh, the, the, um, kind of the spongy looking texture. Tooth doesn't have a spongy looking texture. It has a much more solid texture. No cussing. Yes. It's in the rules. <laughs> exactly. I need a new blade. Exception of that, and that one is a garbage. Mm.
I wonder what that is. So by this point in the day guys we were almost done and I had spent half of my day working on this bone alone and it was so much fun and it was exciting. I just kept digging and there was just more and more bone and eventually I was finding more bones poking out of the dirt. I was working as fast as I could so I could unearth as much as possible before the end of the day. But this is what I ended up with, exposing the entirety of this bone and you can see another piece of bone sticking out right here and well I just gotta say I'm so proud guys as you see here this is an Edmontosaurus and what I found was called a chevron part of its tailbone well guys the day is done we found Tyrannosaurus teeth fragments I spent the day unearthing an Edmontosaurus bone and we got Triceratops teeth <sighs> It's been probably one of the greatest experiences of my life. We gotta come back here. So, but our vacation's not over yet. And I gotta show you guys all the bones we found. So, that's coming up. Oh my God, guys, I had so much fun with this trip and you can bet that Kaylee and I are gonna do it again. But before we go into the fossils that Kaylee and I found during our dig, I want to tell you about the environment of the Hell Creek Formation during the late Cretaceous period. Now, the Hell Creek Formation was sandwiched between a rising mountain range to the west that would become the Rocky Mountains and the remnants of the western interior seaway to the east. This changing environment of both terrestrial and marine life led to this being one of the most fossil rich locations in the entire world. These two pictures are estimations of the inland sea just two million years apart and you can see how much it changed. As a brief overview, the Western Interior Seaway was a vast, relatively shallow body of water that covered much of Central North America during the Cretaceous, and it was patrolled by the dangerous Mosasaurus. Now I want to show you exactly where our dig site was, guys. This didn't actually take that long, I was able to find it pretty quickly. But here in the northwestern portion of South Dakota, you'll find a butte. And a butte is just kind of like a small eroded mountain poking out of the prairie. And it was at this location, this fossil rich area that had once been a marsh and a riverbed, had become a rich record of all of the creatures living in this ecosystem 65 million years ago. Our dig site was right here. What did this environment look like, you may be wondering? Well, the rocks of the Hell Creek Formation show that the landscape was a nearly flat plain, crisscrossed by numerous rivers. This landscape was covered in a mosaic of open woodlands and rockier terrain in the uplands, with lava flows coming from nearby volcanoes and denser woodlands along the river valleys, packed with vegetation and wildlife. This environment was home to some of the most iconic dinosaurs to ever live, like the King Tyrannosaurus Rex, the Triceratops, the Ankylosaurus, Pachycephalosaurus, the Hadrosaur Edmontosaurus, Dakota Raptor, and the Quetzalcoatlus, and many more. All right guys, so I'm gonna switch over to my phone camera for the portion of this video where I get to show off the booty we brought home from the trip. So, let's get a look at our loot. So guys, these are all of the fossils I got to take home. And you know, fossil hunting is a lot like finding buried treasure, but 
this means so much more than any gold. You know, these dusty little echoes of a lost time tell secrets about, you know, an ancient history that no human's ever seen. Real animals, preserved in rock, have helped us to build a story of their lives and how they lived. These bones are more than 65 million years old and can tell us a lot. While these ones aren't anything particularly special, I want to share them with you because they mean a lot to me, guys. So these here are all of the fragments that we brought home. As you can see in here, a lot of really small pieces, but there's ways to identify them as bones. I'll show you these big ones here. You guys saw this one in the video. Got to see me pull this one out of the wall. You can see this shiny surface here. And that shows you that this was actually the outside of the bone. You flip it over here. And you can see this graininess. This porous nature to it. That's the inside of the bone. And that got broken at some point and probably tumbled down the river channel or down a hill and got rounded and eventually settled in the dirt. Same thing to this one. This one's probably the biggest bone that I brought home, but it's only a fragment, but man, this must have belonged to something gigantic. If only I'd be able to tell how, but it's next to impossible. This here I actually know is, thanks to David, is a sea turtle or at least some kind of sea turtle that swam the coastlines of the Western Interior Seaway. You can see some other good examples, guys, of nice shiny surfaces on this bone with the more porous interior. Totally and unidentifiable. But like I said, these are 65 million years old. These belong to animals that lived in the Cretaceous period. Now this isn't all I have to show you. I've got some stuff we were actually able to identify. This first one I have to show you guys is just a testament to why you gotta be careful when doing paleontology. This was a full piece, but I was running these underwater when I got them home to try to clean off some of the dirt, and it just totally crumbled in my hand. If you listen to David at the beginning of our dig, he said that about those dinosaur bones in the ground. I should have listened, but it was a lesson well learned. A triceratops tooth, split to pieces. But with that being said, I do still have one. Kaylee found this one. This is a Triceratops tooth, and let me pull it out here. So like I said, you gotta be oh so careful with this stuff. But this, guys, is a tooth. To a Triceratops. Now that just blows my mind. Once upon a time, these, this tooth was used to eat plant life and keep a trike alive. I'm actually touching a piece of a trike, guys. And that's just profound to me. but it's certainly not the last piece I have to show you. So this was the one that started the big stir when I first started digging. What the one we thought was a, a Tyrannosaurus tooth. But this is that large crocodile tooth and I'm gonna give you guys a good look at it now. Now check this out, guys. I was so hoping it'd be T-Rex, but it's still such an awesome specimen. You can still see the serrations. I'm trying to be as cautious as possible about handle about handling these guys. 
I'm like really frightened that I might ju just drop it and it'll shatter into a million pieces. Because these are like some of my most prized possessions now. So I almost don't even want to pull these out of the bag because they're just so super tiny. But what we have here are some tiny, tiny little stingray tooth, or teeth. Kaylee somehow was able to spot these in all of the dirt we were digging through, and she picked them out. Now these were some crocodile teeth that Kaylee found. Again, I would like to pull them out of the bag, but they're just so super small and very delicate that I'm afraid that I could I would break them. So just try to give you the best look I can, guys. These are just tiny fragments. We didn't find any big pieces of these, but these are Edmontosaurus teeth. How the paleontologist could tell is beyond me. But he's a smart guy, and I trust him. This last one is really my prized possession, guys. These are T-Rex teeth fragments. One second, I'm gonna get these out of the bag. So guys, these are just tiny little fragments of a Tyrannosaurus tooth. Just for an idea, this is just a replica of a full-sized T-Rex maxillary tooth, or maxillary tooth. Put this on here, and you just get kind of an idea of the scale of what we got here. David told me this one here is likely a piece of a much larger T-Rex tooth. But these ones down here are more likely owned by a juvenile or Nano Tyrannus. You can even see in this one where the nerve ran through. Now we found these all surface collected. We didn't pull any of these out of the dirt. So it's not like we ripped apart a tooth. These were just knocked down the hill probably in that rainstorm that came through the couple nights before we started our dig. Man, I sure felt special going home with just even a tiny fragment of the greatest predator to ever walk the earth. Well, that's it, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. I would love to do a project like this again soon. So if you enjoyed the video, please show your support, leave it a like, and hey, if you're new to my channel and this is your first time watching my content, welcome. I hope you'd subscribe and join me for my next video. And guys, I love you all so much for watching. You guys make my day every day, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video. As always, I love you, and I'll see you later. Peace. All right, goodbye, guys. Goodbye. Bye!